Well, what's going on here today is uh, docents from uh, Point Lobos Foundation are out uh, monitoring the things in the inner tidal here. Uh, we just set this up uh, last year, so this is the second time they've done this. Uh, what we're going to do is we hope this will be here for a long time long time forever actually and so we can follow until the sea level rises and pushes it out but we can uh, now in a position to follow the changes that will occur in the next uh, century. When I came and started working in Santa Cruz 40 years ago, 50 years ago now, um, we had almost no information about what it was like before and uh, uh, so we had to kind of guess about it. We, it, we realized that it wasn't constant uh, and it had been changing and now of course we know that uh, things are changing fairly quickly now. We don't know what uh, the changes are going to do to the different species and uh, whether we're going to have new southern species moving in. Uh, whether some of these species are going to move up as the sea level goes up, whether some of them will be displaced completely. Uh, and the only way we can find out is to keep track of it. It's called uh, Hopkins Rose. Uh, it's, a, it's a very pretty thing. It's very conspicuous, so you can't miss it. And one of the things that uh, was uh, caught my eye was that I remember going out and seeing lots of them. But I didn't make any association with it. it uh, that's the way it was. And then we never saw them, and so I was wondering whether they had completely disappeared and we didn't know what had happened so we started to do more careful surveys and realized that when you see them it was also when you had these uh, events of warm water coming in. And now we can use them as a signal that things are changing and we think that this is a signal that we're going to have another shift in the uh, oceanographic conditions. It's getting warmer and it's also that there's not as much uh, offshore winds and so there's not as much uh, upwelling Upwelling drives water offshore. We don't even know really what causes the oscillation of the El Nino, which is now, that's, that's only was really uh, understood about 50 years ago. Less than that, and people started to make, uh, you know, you have to have, just like this monitoring, you have to have a long-term set of data before you can see the pattern. And then you see the pattern and you can start to guess about what's going on.